uh, last count, Corla. And I think it's clear to all of us, whether irrespective of which side of the House we're on, that we're not going to make any progress at all, whether through, whether in relation to the banking crisis, the deficit crisis, or any of the other challenges that we face, unless we actually set about a concentration on economic growth and on jobs. It's all about jobs, Alas uh, Corla. I think everybody accepts that, irrespective of what their perspective is. But there's not enough simply for us just rhetorically to say that we need jobs. The government has a responsibility to actually intervene and to do what it can uh, in a measured way, in a prudent way, but still, I believe, in an ambitious way, in order to actually bring jobs back into our economy and into our country. And that's why, Alas Corla, I support this bill and support the measures that's contained within it. I find it a little strange that some, some colleagues, I think it was Deputy Doherty yesterday, was complaining that the bill was too short, as if, a bill, as if a sh the shortness of a bill was something to criticise. I mean, let's look at what the legislation contains. The legislation contains the measures that are required to be put into law arising from the Jobs Initiative. The Jobs Initiative is, I think, given the constraints around the government, Alaska, uh, Count Corla, given the difficulties that we have, is an imaginative, is an imaginative proposal early on in the life of the government. It sets out a number of areas that the government is uh, in a position to intervene in. Uh, in some areas, and some, some uh, considerable element of it has to do with the tax code, has to do with VAT reductions in, for, a temp for a particular period in particular sectors, has to do with the um, uh, uh, treatment of uh, uh, research and development, and uh, in relation to the air, the air travel tax. And I think each of these measures has been welcomed. I don't think in the course of the debate, um, uh, Alas Kiancorla, I heard anybody quibbling with any of those individual measures. I may be wrong on that. There may have been a couple around the edge who thought maybe in relation to the RT didn't go far enough or whatever. But of course, for each one of these measures that the government intends to introduce, and they all have considerable merit, they have to be matched by funding. They have to be funded from somewhere. So for people then to say, having uh, warmly, as Deputy McGrath, Finian McGrath did, and some of the some of colleagues from Fianna Fáil, to say, yes, these are all interesting measures, and I support them all, and anything that will bring in jobs, I'm far. But then to sort of disappear from the argument when the government actually comes forward with a proposal as to how we're going to fund them. Because fund them, fund them, the government must do. So it's dishonest and disingenuous, it seems to me, for people to say that they want to have one side without the other. In the words of the song, Las Cancorla, you can't have one without the other in this instance. So if people are not happy with the, uh, the pension levy, and who could be, who could be ecstatic or, 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 or delighted with the notion of a pension levy? Nobody could. Many people will be affected uh, by the levy. That's, that's certainly true. But we have to balance the achievement or we balance the... Uh, uh, the, the if you like, the, the positive uh, opportunities that that revenue will give to the government in order to set about these particular uh, measures that people are so, are, are so uh, supportive of. So I think it is incumbent on people who say that they like the first three parts of the bill but don't like the last bit to tell us where that uh, uh, funding or in the alternative could be, uh, could be obtained given that the, there is this requirement, uh, this overriding requirement for uh, uh, revenue neutrality or budget neutrality in relation to, to, what the government, to what the government does. And I think that if you look at the pension levy um, at last count Corley and examine it the, from the point of view of equity, and as I say, many people will be affected, and I should, I should say myself, for the, for the avoidance of any criticism in relation to a conflict, that I'd be affected by it myself. I think many people who put together pension funds um, will be uncomfortable and unhappy that they, as, as to put it sort of at its most extreme, the government is reaching in and taking away, taking away some of their money. But I see this as, a, as an equitable proposition because what we're doing is, what the government's proposing to do is essentially engage in a temporary clawback of the, uh, of the tax relief that has in fact been extended to people who are fortunate enough, as I have been and others, to be able to put, to get, put, put aside uh, money for a pension fund. And why shouldn't the, the government do that? This is, we have, and I heard Deputy Mitchell earlier on, I understand what she means that, you know, what people did with the expectation that it would be there. An awful lot of people's expectations about an awful lot of things have been undermined in the last two or three years. And nobody is unaffected. And the fact that, that people had that expectation, legitimate or otherwise, five years ago, that this pot would grow and grow and grow, uh, assisted in great part by the tax relief that were given, um, it's, it's, it, that is unfortunate. But the fact is, we are faced with a, a crisis in this country. We must get people back to work. We have to make an intervention. The government has done it. It's done it in an imaginative way. It's shown how it can be funded. It's a temporary clawback 
Uh, it's been made very clear. It's for a period of four years. There aren't other sources of income. You know, we, we, we can't go, it seems to me, within the, within the, the parameters that we're facing. Um, in relation to, for example, income tax, there's a limit, it seems to me, as to what one can do in relation to income tax. But I would say, on a personal note, that I do think there's merit in the, in the, there is still merit, there remains merit in the proposal that we should again revisit at some point. I know we have a programme for government that's agreed, but we should again revisit the question of income taxation of, of high earners. I think that will be something that will have to be revisit, revisited in the future in terms of, in terms of the uh, equity in our country. And in terms of funding of the kind of programmes that we need. But we have the programme for government, we have a measure of agreement as to what's required. This is an imaginative step forward. It will put people back to work. It is perhaps not the most ambitious stimulus programme in the history of the universe, but it will put people back to work. There are uh, plans in the education sector in relation to multiple millions, on the roads in relation to the retrofitting programme. These are real proposals which will yield real jobs in our economy and it deserves the support of every member in the House.